Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. You are tuned in to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon here out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California, and every Thursday and Saturday out of my syndicated CNBC News Radio, KCAA AM 1050. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can make your life happier 88% of the time. And if you have missed any of my past shows, I've um, this is actually a beautiful radio for our deaf community series. And if you've noticed already, my staff interpreter, Romina Mina, is joining us today to help bring this to yet another audience on the planet. So welcome to all of my deaf listeners. And I am very happy that we actually had Rick O'Berry uh, interpreted as well as um, other Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, Dr. Pat Allen, and Marianne from Gilligan's Island. So please go to my YouTube where you can get that whole playlist of Radio for a Deaf Community series shows. And thank you, Romina, for coming and doing this again. So I am... Uh, uh, just also letting you know that if you have missed any of my past podcasts uh, with fabulous guests like the one I have on today who's coming back on, uh, the uh, um, I've had, uh, let's see, Leave it to Beaver, I've had uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, lots and lots of mega bestsellers who have a lot to help us get to that point of happiness 88% of the time. So you can find me on Stitcher, on GLN Network, on KCAA, on UBN, on on iTunes, on uh, YouTube. So I am everywhere and anywhere that you would like to have hope and happiness. So please do find me. If you're not a friend on Facebook with me yet, please do. Would love to link in with you as well. So there's many different ways. And thank you, thank you, thank you to my listeners, my numbers just came in, and I am now on YouTube, over 33,000 views up from last year. So thank you very much for visiting my YouTube site. And if you haven't, please do. They're all free. So share them and splatter more of this hope and happiness all over the planet for me. And today, I am so pleased to have back someone who uh, <laughs> is actually you know, people call me the Asian Oprah because of so many past Oprah guests on my show. And she is one of them. Actually, Oprah loves her very, very much. And I love her very much, too. She's been on twice before. And I have been lately struggling once again with that thing called fat and ugly attack. So I thought I would bring on the pro back to the studio. She is the number one. She's the author of nine books including the number one New York Times bestseller, Women, Food, and God. Janine's pioneering books were among the first to link compulsive eating and perpetual dieting with deeply personal and spiritual issues that go far beyond food, weight, and body image. She's appeared on many national television shows, including The Oprah Show, 2020, NBC Nightly News, The View, CBS Early Show, The Today Show, and Good Morning America. Please welcome to my studio, back here again, Ms. Janine Roth. <laughs> welcome back. 
<laughs> Thank you. I love that applause. I know, isn't it? And you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it because you do so much for so many people. I was just talking to a very close friend of mine who is a therapist and she goes, well, tell her that anytime anyone comes in with a uh, food question, she refers them to your book, that you are very... Um, very honest and down to earth with what you're saying and very real and very inspiring. So that's the, your compliment for the day. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Take that in. Take that in. So I'm going to jump right in and take advantage of on your website, which is beautiful, by the way. For those of you who have never been there, go visit JanineRoth.com. J, uh, sorry, G E N E E N. R-O-T-H dot com. And on there, you offer a free call to you on how to quit judging yourself. So I thought, you know what? <laughs> Since I have this opportunity to have you on, I'm going to actually take advantage of that free call and do that on the air. So I'm going to be the caller for a change. And I'm going to ex describe to you kind of what's going on with me right now when it comes to body and weight. And I'm sure this is how, you, you know, you, your normal callers come in with questions like this. And then you can walk me through because I know that I'm not alone. So you ready? Yeah. All right. So I am ageless, number one. Uh, <laughs> and, but I am a, a coach for midlife opportunities. So we'll just say, uh, we'll put me in that age range. And my history has been exactly like my favorite book of yours called When You Eat at the Refrigerator, Pull Up a Chair. And that is, uh, I've gone up and down and up and down and up and down in my weight. Um, I was a chubby kid. Um, I had my mom tell me that I was fat, ugly, and clumsy, and that message certainly led me to drop, I think, like 30-some pounds. So I went from chubby kid and uh, 14 years old, This uh, on the way to school, this guy on a bicycle went by me and said, ugly, and that st stayed with me. So between those two things, I became a model just to prove that I was neither fat or ugly. And uh, modeled for six, uh, eight years and uh, dropped quite a bit of weight. I was very unhealthy. My diet was a uh, pack of cigarettes, um, coffee, a head of cauliflower, and um, an illegal substance that I won't admit to, but it helps you lose weight. So I did that throughout my eight years and maintained a very size zero two and thought I looked pretty good. And um, if anyone told me I looked unhealthy, I would say, you're just jealous. And then I, had, I got married. I had two kids. I gained um, probably 30, 40 pounds, uh, got rid of 10 uh, after the birth of the first one, put on some more for the second one, lost 10 after that, but was up uh, 30, 40 pounds. Uh, then went through a divorce and went on the divorce diet, <laughs> lost 38 pounds and was down to zero again. Um, I thought I looked good, but when I look back at the pictures, I was very gaunt and uh, I couldn't be thin enough, but I didn't think I looked good. In all of these times, in all of this, in all of the years of modeling and winning the regional Hawaiian Tropic uh, uh, for Canada, in all of these things, I never really could look in the mirror and say, you look beautiful, or you look thin, or you look um, desirable. Like I, I would for a fraction of a second, and then I, I would go into that while well, there's still more pounds to lose or there's still something, something, something. And I remember in anguish when I would ask God, if I, can I feel half as good about my body as people think I look like? And I, I can remember just the poignancy of that prayer. And um, rolling forward today to today, uh, I've, I've now, um, you know, I, this picture flashed up on Facebook, you know how they go five years ago. And I looked at that and it's like, oh, why wasn't I happy when I look like that? 
because I looked good. And why, you know, I have a, a friend who's a therapist who says, you know, you have to look in the mirror and love every part of your body and love the, the, the love the way you look naked. And I can't do that. I wish I could. And it's a good darn thing that this show is called Take My Advice. I'm not using it <laughs> because I will tell callers. I know people are going to pull up some of my past episodes with callers and where I coach them and my life balance coaching practice where I tell people they are beautiful exactly as they are. And I believe it more of the time than I used to, but I still struggle. And so I've been at the gym and I've been trying to eat healthy and trying to work out every day and it's slow and I get mad. And it's like, why do guys seem to have such an easy time losing weight? Why is it so difficult for me? Why is it so difficult? It's not fair. And I tell my clients all the time, if you want fair, go to Pomona, where the county fair is. So I'm having to really, really address some of my own deep-seated core. And I restarted reading your book, um, both all of your books. And, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to ask you to come back on because I need help. I, I, I don't I don't seem to as 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 advanced as I am on so many other levels. I just there's something deep seated in me that will not allow me to love my body the way it is. There you go. <laughs> my mom. Uh, I'm so glad my uh -huh. mom doesn't listen because she's like, oh my God, she's airing dirty laundry again. So 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 help me. <laughs> Janine, help well, me. You're the first guru. Of all, you know, what I want to say is, and you probably already know this, is that you just expressed <laughs> what many, if not most, women feel about themselves and their bodies. Mm. Which is so, why I did it. Which is why. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, and so I'm very glad you said it and spoke it and. Um, that other people are listening because mm -hmm. it lets everybody who's listening who also struggles and suffers mm -hmm. with the very same things know they're not alone. And that's really, really important. Mm. That's a very um, wonderful gift mm. to give Thank to you. people. Thank to you. To just say the truth. Yeah. This is how it is for me. And I've been working on this and at this and with this since I've been 14 and it's still a difficult struggle. Mm -hmm. So that's um, not good news. <laughs> well, no, but it's the truth. Right. And so um, the truth is always a good place to start because mm -hmm. unless you start there, there's no place to go. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. That's the first thing I want to say. And as I was listening to you, I was feeling my heart, you know, just hurting mm. listening to this because, of course, as you know, I struggled for many, many years with the same thing. And now I work with um, thousands of people because I teach either large workshops or smaller retreats. Mm -hmm. um, with people who are still struggling with this. So yeah. I know this from the inside out. Yeah. And one thing, and maybe this is just a place to start, which often people don't like to hear, mm -hmm. is that until, well, first of all, everything you believe about love and fear and transformation is revealed in how and what and when you eat, that our relationships with food, if we can believe this, and I think so many people don't believe this, they think, we think, I thought, mm -hmm. well, you know what, let me just get this thing with food handled. Right. Let me just lose the weight I need to lose by doing whatever I need to do to lose it, and I'll get that handled, and then all the beliefs, I have about myself, any leftover beliefs about my self-worth, any shame I have, any judgment I have, any feelings of or convictions about 
my deep-seated wars. I'll handle those. But let me first deal with this thing with right. food. Let me lose first. the weight first, and then we'll work on the other stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so that doesn't work, as you have just described. Yeah. Because no matter how thin, and I was anorexic at 82 pounds for a mm. while, I looked in the mirror, and as I say, when you look at yourself through shattered lenses, you look shattered. Mm. And so no matter how thin we ever get, if there isn't a sense of, um, if there isn't change, a change of consciousness really, a change, a deep change Mm. in how we see ourselves that is not dependent on what we look like because as you know, as I know, and as we all know, we know a lot of, and we are perfect examples of that, thin. Well, you didn't say you were miserable during those eight years at mm. that ver- at size zero, but for me, when I was anorexic and was a size zero myself, I wasn't any happier. Right, right. I wasn't any happier. And so we still persist in believing that being thin equals being happy. Happy. And we will not let ourselves know what we already know, Mm -hmm. which is that that is a lie. That is not true. The the news, the tabloids, the, you know, everywhere we look, we see examples and stories of thin, miserable people. (laughs) Yeah. Thin, miserable people. You know, I wrote in When You Eat at the Refrigerator, um, you know, I, I can't remember the name of the chapter, but it was something like, it doesn't matter if you're thin, you will still have cellulite and you will still be unhappy and eventually <laughs> you will die. And, <laughs> and so, you know, we can't take our thin bodies with us. Right. But what we can do is look and see what is our life like from moment to moment here on earth? How do we want to live? Mm. How do we want to treat ourselves? And start from the inside out because obviously, and this is not the same as fat acceptance, and I put that in quotes, because sometimes people think I'm saying, oh, well, okay, I can just go ahead and binge and I can just accept my fat even though I'm uncomfortable in my body. Right. And Janine is saying, go ahead, it's all good, it's all fine, right. just accept myself, eat, binge, and it's all good. And that is absolutely not what I'm saying. Yeah, thanks because... for that clarification. Because I, yeah. Yeah, I, I told people that I'm having you on, and, and they asked who you, so the, the rare person that doesn't know who you are, and I say, you're the, you're the one who tells people to throw away their scale. And she looked at me and said, you you're saying that i can then then i could eat myself into a house and i said no right. that's not that's not the extreme we're talking about but that the obsession no, no it's not yeah the obsession because, to weigh and and no. make ourselves happy with a pound down or unhappy with a pound up is the obsession we have to lose. And if you've just tuned in and you recognize the voice, yes, I have her on for the third time because she is so fabulously popular. And one of the, one of the reasons, thank you, that my numbers are high is the past Oprah guest and past Asian Oprah guest, Janine Roth, who is a mega bestseller and an absolute um, wise teacher of mine when it comes to body acceptance, body uh Uh, self-esteem, body image, and perpetual dieting and compulsive eating or under eating. Uh, You are listening to Janine Roth. So continue. (laughs) I just needed to identify in case somebody just came in. Yes, it's good to let people know this. And it's good for them to know that like your friend who thought that I was saying, okay, we'll just go ahead and eat. I mean, if you, when we binge, we're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We suffer. Right. I mean, that's the thing. What I'm talking about is ending your suffering. And, mm. uh, and, that, and I'm not talking about, well, end your suffering of dieting, just dieting, and therefore go ahead and binge, because binging is suffering too. Right, right. You, it, binging right. makes you yeah. uncomfortable. When you eat past your physical 
fullness level, yeah. you suffer. You're uncomfortable. The, the deeper question here is what are you using food to mm-hmm. say and do? Mm-hmm. I realized when I, with the big turnaround for me that happened years ago, was that I understood that I was using my relationship with food, and it was then overeating because I was about 60 pounds overweight Mm -hmm. then, that I was trying to get through to myself. Or that that compulsive eating or emotional eating, which is basically eating when you're not hungry, not stopping when you've had enough, was a language that I was speaking to myself in, but since I wasn't interested in decoding the language or learning the language, I didn't understand what I was trying to say. Mm. And so I kept eating as a way to get through to myself because I wouldn't listen to myself any other way. The truth was that there were many ways in which, and this is going to seem strong and extreme, but I'll say it anyway, right. there were ways that I loathed myself mm. and or certainly did not like myself, was mm. ashamed of myself, was judging myself on a daily basis that I wasn't aware of and except through food. And I kept thinking that if I could stop the weight, if I could stop the overeating, then the judgment on all the other levels would stop. Too. Right, right. Well, that's me. I mean, if I could just get back to that picture five years ago, I would quit beating myself up because now it's a constant, if I'm eating, if I'm overeating, if I'm under eating, if I'm not eating the right thing, I'm just, it's a constant bashing. It's like, well, you shouldn't have ate that. Or then uh, immediately followed by who's the boss of you? Why can't you eat that? And you deserve to eat that. And you should be eating that. And who's telling you not to eat that? And it's not that big of a deal. You're not in a relationship now. So it doesn't matter what you look like with your clothes on. Right. <laughs> you know? And like, that's I mean, right. It's and so horrible. you're talking about a dynamic, <laughs> and that's what the free call that you're talking about on my website that I did last week. That's actually still available oh, good. if people want to listen to it. Because I know it. my listeners would love to hear it. Yes. Yeah. Um, But that's what I talked about. I talked about that voice in us, that voice that judges and shames us. Mm. And And dieting and torturing yourself around food is an expression of that voice, but it's not the source of that voice. You know, somehow we believe that if we shame and judge ourselves enough, Mm. we will change. That that kind of deprivation, judgment, Mm -hmm. fear, guilt, and punishment, you know, it's, it's quite a paradox. If we shame and judge and guilt trip and punish and fear ourselves enough, we'll end up to be happy, loving, free, <laughs> contented people. <laughs> that's I mean, great. That that's I mean, that's great. That, that, that's that's what we all believe. Though. Right. That is, and and if we did that, we'd be thin. Then we should all be thin because we beat the living crap out of each, uh, ourselves with that. That's stuff. right. Yeah. That's <sighs> right. That's thank you for that. Okay, so yeah. so that's the first step for me is to stop doing that. The, and but but I want to say but and I want to say that's a practice because um, that's what you're dealing with. Then is the inner critic, the inner mm-hmm. parent, the inner bully, the I mean whatever you want, the inner judge. Right. You know whatever you want to call that voice, and we all have one. Every right. single one of us right. developed it. It's part of, you know, becoming a person. It's part of ego development. It's all in place. By the time we're four, we've got that voice. That's yeah. the voice that we internalized to keep us from putting our hands in fire and running out into streets and right. throwing food on the walls when we went to other people's houses. <laughs> you know, we had to learn somehow right. to fit into society, and that's how we learned it. The problem is that that's what we use now. As, as guidance, mm-hmm. and that is a voice of shame mm-hmm. and judgment. And no, and I really mean this, and I know this to be true, the 100% truth, that n- change never 
ever happens from judgment mm. and from shame. Mm. Ever. And so mm. until you learn to either stop that voice. Yeah. That by voice is already it, <laughs> That voice already is saying, You already know this. You should know this. You know better. Yeah. Why well, it's that's like, the voice. Ah! Yeah. And that's the voice <laughs> that you need to say stop. Yeah. Every single time there's a should, shouldn't, right, wrong, good, bad, mm-hmm. that voice of sort of hand on hip, yeah. and who do you think you are, little <laughs> Missy, or how come you didn't learn this before, or how many times do you have to hear this before you finally learn this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That voice does not go away yeah. when you lose weight. Yeah. That's the problem that we're talking about here. Right. We think that the world changes mm-hmm. when we lose weight, but we are exactly the same, except yeah. our bodies are thinner. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that changes. How we feel about ourselves, as you just said, and as I learned, yeah. I too went on what I call the all-brown diet, the cigarettes, coffee, and diet shots of cream soda diet uh-huh. that I went on for weeks at a time right. and lost a whole lot of weight. But that didn't change my relationship mm-hmm. to myself, how I felt about myself. Mm-hmm. Then it was, if I ate anything, that voice would come careening in. Right. Or if I said the wrong thing to somebody, or if I made a mistake, yeah. or if I didn't you know, do well, or if I got Mm -hmm. rejected, or, you know, a a thousand things can happen in a day that have nothing to do with food or weight where that voice comes in. And if you are vulnerable to being judged and shamed by that that voice, whether you're thin or not, that voice will cut you off at the knees Mm -hmm. every time. Right, right. And I eat at that voice or that voice. Yes, of course. Yeah, that is that there's a very strong correlation between that voice and eating and not enjoying what I'm eating or eating for the sake of eating or eating at something just That's to right. prove that I don't have to lose weight. And then That's I wake right. up and I look and I go, I'm disgusted. So so there's no win with that voice. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's no, no win. The only the only you know, the thing is, you know, I'm going to back up for a second okay. and say this, that, you know, what you eat, once you are, get to hear that voice clearly and are no longer being run by that voice, mm-hmm. and right now most of us are run by that voice until you really tackle that, take it on, and say to that voice, and this is a practice. This is not a one-time thing. Right. This is, I mean, once you get it, that no good ever comes from listening to that voice. Mm-hmm. And once you recognize that when that voice talks, what happens is that you feel about two feet small, mm-hmm. small fat, or tall. ugly. Mm-hmm. Ugly, fat, bad, wrong, mm-hmm. a failure. Mm-hmm. Once you start catching on that, oh, 10 minutes ago, I was feeling just fine, and then somebody said something, or I got an email telling me this, or I suddenly got a, had a trigger, and we all have different triggers. Yeah. Could be comparative judgment, or, you know, somebody is telling us how well they're doing, and suddenly we feel like, oh, my God, yeah. I should be there. Yeah, or and being that, the, that yeah. voice. In the gym, this woman came up to me a couple of months ago and said, are you the one? You, you look like this woman, but she was so thin. <laughs> and I, so I just pretended, no, that wasn't me. That was <laughs> yes, like, so... Yes, right. And or, <sighs> you know, I mean, in the old days, I used to say to people, we'll say to... Right, I think that wasn't me was actually a very good response because <laughs> that way right. it kept you from engaging. Right. And, and it didn't help that my husband actually uh, <laughs> described me as obese and this woman came up to me and said, are you the ex-wife because she, she, he said you were obese. You're not obese, which mm-hmm. was 
you know, but I see that's the thing. The, the, my shattered lenses, I love that expression. Thank you for that. I have to get rid, I have to take off those shattered lenses. And we are up against uh, promo time, and we will be right back, I promise you, with my fabulous teacher, Janine Roth. But um, we're going to spend a couple minutes thanking the sponsors that make this show possible. We'll be back in two and two. Peace in and peace out. Celebrate summer and find a perfect bathing suit to show off your beauty. Yvette's Bikinis on Main Street in Seal Beach will flatter your body with bikinis, bikinis, cover-ups, sundresses, and other accessories in all shapes and sizes. Visit www.thebathingsuitqueen.com and get 25% off any purchase because it's never too late to have fun in the sun. Do you want more life balance? Are you 88% happy with your health and well-being, your relationships, your livelihood? If yes, do the Abundance. If no, and you'd like a life balance tune-up and align those head heart spark plugs and smog check the BS belief systems that are clogging your lifelines, contact Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura at www.thenumber4balance.org for a session on the air or a private one on the beach. And welcome back. And if you are in Seal Beach area, you have to go visit Yvette's Bikini. She will make your body look the way you want it to and, and help with this theme of loving your body as it is. We have mega bestseller and uh, favorite Oprah guest and favorite Asian Oprah guest, Janine Roth, with me today live in studio. And so my one question is, why can't we go back to the Renaissance age? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that is exactly the kind of thinking that um, keeps people feeling like life is against them. You know, that mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, I, 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 there was a wonderful Buddhist teacher year, years ago who said, hell is wanting to be somewhere different than you are. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. you know, it would be great if, you know, Pulsitude, as somebody once described my body, which is sort of fleshy and round, or another person described my body as just being made of many circles, um, you know, and I want it to be made of sticks uh -huh. instead of circles. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to realize I've got what I've got. Right. And I, here I am, and now what do I do? You know, how do I live in this body, really? And... How, what's the first thing I do? Because I have certain beliefs about my value mm -hmm. and that are coming out through my relationship with food. And if I, and so what I say is the shape of your body obeys the shape of your beliefs. Mm -hmm. When you change your body, you don't change your beliefs. And unless you change your beliefs, then your body will stay at a certain weight for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but then your beliefs will pop it back eventually. Right. To, That's the weight regain. Yeah. Yeah. And so the first thing is, as we've been talking about, is to, to disengage right. from that voice of uh -huh. judgment and shame uh -huh. and to realize that nobody is allowed to talk to you like that. Mm. If you saw a child crying at the side of the road, you would not go over and kick her. <laughs> you would go over and put your arm around her and say, sweetheart, Tell me what's going on. And, and instead, we do the, the thing of kicking ourselves. Yeah. We just kick ourselves. And we think, if I kick myself enough, I'll get into shape. What we need to do is, first of all, disengage from that voice, because nobody is allowed to talk to you like that, because you wouldn't talk to anybody like mm -hmm. that. But what I, if you it's, know, but what if I mean, it's I would true? never talk to, say to anybody... And this is how my voice talks to me. You are disgusting. Mm -hmm. Would you ever say that to anybody? No. Mostly, well, there's I some people, no. but... <laughs> 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 there's 2% of the population I might want to say that to, to be perfectly honest. But, yes. but, but I have to say this, though. We're, you know, what if it's true? What if... What if I've let myself go? What if... Forget that. Okay, okay, okay. So that's what people say to me. Right. But 
It's true. I really have gained 20 pounds, and my thighs really are the size of Montana. (laughs) Now what do I do? Right. And what I say to them is shaming and judging yourself like that will not lead to change. There is objective, yes, Mm -hmm. I have been using food for reasons I might not understand, and so the only thing there is to do right now is turn towards myself, not away from myself. Become curious Mm. and compassionate about what I'm doing. Most of us just want to be fixed. Yes. We don't want to understand (laughs) ourselves. We want somebody else Mm. to make it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now. Yeah. Or, you know, you reminded me of what somebody in in um, my retreat said to me, I would die to be as thin as I was five years ago when I would have died to have been thinner. Mm, So there's that, you know, to you saying, I looked at that picture and how come I didn't see this? And, you know, and we If I could just get back there, I will feel good about myself again. But you didn't feel good about yourself then. That's the thing. You said (laughs) that you didn't. Yes, you, when people... See, this is the this is the disconnect right. we all have. Right. We put a fantasy on how, how we actually felt. Then mm-hmm. I have somebody who I, I you know I I know somebody who's had. In fact, I know two people who have two a piece gastric sleeve operations, mm-hmm. and they thought they were going to get fixed. Right. They lost weight the first time. Then they managed to figure out how to gain it all back. <laughs> And then they went back again Mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it didn't change anything because how they felt about themselves didn't change. That's what I'm saying. If you don't start from the inside out, despite the fact that you've now gained 50 pounds, you know, yes, you Mm -hmm. can go have a gastric, you know, a lap band operation, and yes, you can do that, but that's not going to change anything except temporarily. You've got to ask yourself, do I want to change how I feel about myself? But I can't say that I like the way that I look now. I cannot say it. No, I get it. No, (laughs) you know, I'm not telling you to lie. Okay. I'm not telling you to, you know, but I am saying to you that judging and shaming yourself is not going to help you lose weight. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a bad habit. It's actually turning towards mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. and saying, talking to yourself like you would a child. Okay, tell me what's going on when you're turning to food when you're not hungry. Mm-hmm. I want to hear it. And mm-hmm. how can I help you? What do you need from me? Because when we turn to food when we're not hungry, we're usually feeling sad, lonely, bored, angry, Mm -hmm. grief-stricken. We don't know what else to do. And so we use food to to fill. It's sort of like when we turn to food, food becomes our drug of choice. Mm. It becomes a way we change the channel of our minds. I don't want to focus on or feel what's happening. Therefore, I'll just use food, distract myself, start hating myself, because Mm -hmm. I know how to do that. Right, right. And the more I eat, the more crappy I feel, which just perpetuates the cycle. Yeah, yeah. Now I recognize me. (laughs) I feel terrible. I feel ashamed. I feel self-loathing. And it's all about food. It's very easy to believe that if only we lost weight, right. we'd feel great. Right, right. But every single person, every mm. single person who's ever lost weight knows that's not true. Yeah. Or they have an excuse. Oh, yeah, well, I lost weight, but then my best friend died, or I lost my job, or I lost all my money, or, you know, this, and that's what made me gain back the weight. No, that's not what made you gain back the weight. That right. is not what happened. Right, right. Yeah, because I, I remember the moment uh, a couple of months ago where I, I, I just, like, it's like, 
every area of my life is so amazingly wonderful. And I love, I'm grateful, I'm just, you know, everything. Just this one area, just this no, one No, but you know what? Thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> that one area, and so I want to go to something else here, which goes along with that. When you say every area of your life is so good, how much time do you spend... Because this sort of is, is, is sort of the balance to stopping mm-hmm. that voice. And I, and I want to say again, you, that is a necessity mm-hmm. to stop that voice. Mm-hmm. It's a necessity. Yeah. If you cannot keep going with that voice of shame. But the other part is to spend more time as really taking in the good. What I realize with my students Mm-hmm. is that and i and we spend every day in my retreat at least a couple of minutes a day focusing on the good and taking it in allowing yourself to focus on what's not wrong right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not just check it off the list. Oh, I love my job. I love this. Yeah. I love my kids. I, you know, it's do you really let yourself have it? Mm-hmm. Savoring. Take it in. Yeah, yeah. And, and you mentioned retreats. I don't want to run out of time here and rush this. We, we, you don't often do retreats, and I wanted to tell my listeners, if you're in the, and I have Boston area listeners, you have a retreat coming up in Boston. And, right. Uh, I have a workshop coming up in Boston on October 9th through 11th at Kripalu. I do that once a year, do once a year on the East Coast, mm-hmm. and that's coming up in two weeks. And you can either go to my website and go to events and find that out. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, JanineRoth.com and the events column. And that's fabulous because that Kripalu is great, and you get to be sort of at a little spa and have a great time and eat great food, and and then spend time with me. And also coming up in November, twice a year on the West Coast, I do six-day retreats. And that's coming up in November, The I think it's November 2nd or 3rd, it starts. And those are fabulous because those are, as I said, six-day immersion experiences. And I do want to say there is nothing like showing up in person with a group of people who want the same thing, the right. growth factor becomes exponential mm-hmm. because you're sitting in the presence of people who want the same thing as you and the light bulbs are going off every, you know, five right. minutes or ten right. minutes. And so you, you feel the support mm-hmm. of this community of people that makes the leap much more possible. Right. And at, at the retreats, we do ongoing support. You know, there's just endless support for people yeah. after the retreats, should they want it. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I would just really recommend them because I see the miracles, truly, that happen when people focus and immerse themselves, either in the three-day or six-day, re- you know, experiences. Right. In person. Right. Yes. So I'll be in Australia. Otherwise, I would be there. But one of these I uh, think next year, I'm going to definitely put it on my calendar. But I, I highly recommend it. And I know from listening to this program and uh, Janine's been on my show twice before. Go to YouTube and get those because this is a woman who knows <laughs> and has lived and has a way of finally getting into the root of what it is that is ailing you, that gives you that crazy impetus to want to uh, eat yourself into um, self-disgust. So so highly recommend her book, Woman, Food, and God, which is a New York Times bestseller translated into many languages. Uh, you can get that on Amazon. You can. I. I am so happy and grateful that I got the, uh, got the word that the Asian Oprah giveaway today is a hard copy, of uh, this book and it's fabulous. So the first person to go to forbalance.org and say Janine. Uh, G-E-N-E-E-N Roth.com is her website. We'll get a copy of that book. So that's the Asian Oprah giveaway for today. Now, to, f- to wrap up, 
um, I think the, to to put this moose on the table because there is now this movement of you know the acceptance of you know the the large models, uh, large size clothes. Um, that it's okay, or the, the, that you're not allowed to discriminate when it comes to body size, or they call it sizeism. What's your take on that? Are we are we giving people the permission to eat unhealthy, become an unhealthy weight, become an unhealthy size, and try to make that okay? Uh, curious. I think only each person knows the truth. If you are uncomfortable in your body, mm-hmm. if you are not at ease, if this doesn't feel like your natural weight, I'm mm-hmm. not saying your thinnest weight, I'm saying your natural weight, the weight at which you can move easily, sit easily, um, walk easily, if you don't feel like you're wearing your insides on your outside, so to speak, Mm-hmm. then um, you can rationalize being at a much larger weight and say, it's fine. And really, as I said at the beginning, on some level, yeah, because it doesn't matter how thin, you know, even thin people mm-hmm. get old, have cellulite and die. That's the name of that <laughs> chapter. So, <laughs> you know, if you could take it all with you, great, but you can't. And right. so on that level, It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. On the level of the fact that we're living in these bodies on this earth and that we have to get up and move and walk and be comfortable, and really what's the point of not being at ease in them? Right, These are the vehicles we've been giving. They house our spirits. Why not be comfortable and at ease in them? But only you know that. I can't look at somebody and say, okay, well, that's a rationalization, and that isn't a rationalization. And, you know, you know, if you're using food as a drug, Mm -hmm. if you're using it to change the channel of what's going on in your mind, if you're using it when you're sad, lonely, bored, angry, then, you know, you're using it as a drug. And, And, you know, it's much easier and kinder and truthful to mm-hmm. learn that no matter what you're feeling, no situation, no feeling is unworkable. Feelings pass. Right. They come and go. We don't need to be scared of ourselves. We right. don't need to eat our way out of them. Right, right, right. Absolutely. We are out of time, but I am mm-hmm. so grateful mm-hmm. having you once again on the air. Janine Roth, I am presenting you one more time with the Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award from Dr. Marissa. Thank you so <laughs> much. Oh. Such a pleasure. <laughs> Fantastic. JanineRoth.com. Go visit her. Go sign up for her workshops. And we are at the end of the show now. Uh, time for our balance bar, which is, yay, we today, yesterday finished round uh, 51 of the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. If you'd like to officially register for round 52, starting October 1st, go to fourbalance.org. And if you finish all 21 days in a row without complaining, you will win a pack of my 52 card pick me up stacking the deck for life balance for with Dr. Marissa and, um, Eva from, uh, one of my listeners from Kentucky and uh, Janina and Daia, they all three finished. So we need more people who actually win and go without complaining for 21 days in a row. If you'd like to support the app, the app partner to this fast, please donate at GoFundMe.com, uh, HR. A-X-L-O, and that would be wonderful. All the proceeds go towards my peace work around the planet, including my trip to Australia coming up. Also, next week, uh, Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa. Last week of the month, we are having a battle of sex, not sexes, with past sexpert guest, Tinetta Denier, my choir diva friend, Marianne Lewis, and the director peru- uh, producer of Conversations About the Girls. Yes, those girls. Uh, Sonia Jackson will be joining us. It'll be a very fun panel and a very fun show. So do tune in next week on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. Peace in. 
and peace out. Dark it is.